Hey guys, I'm back, and today we're going to be making something that's really going to beautify your scenes. We're going to be simulating fog with a post-process material. It's a very low impact, but also a very functional sort of sort of tool that's going to really crank up your scenes to the next level. And to do it, I'm here on my landscape map, which I, I made in a previous tutorial. And all we're going to need to do is just get started. Let's make a material, call it colored fog mat. And right off the bat, let's just make an instance and add it to our post-process volume. So find your post-process volume in your world outliner, uh, search for materials, add an entry to this array, pick asset reference, and drag that instance on top. This just sets, sets us up for later so we don't have to, you know, don't have to worry about it. And then let's just open up our material. So right off the bat, we need to change our material domain to post-process, and then we get started. So the way that this effect is achieved is by lurping between the post-process input, a color, and we, and we manipulate the scene depth in order to make it look, look like fog. So first off the bat, let's grab ourselves a scene texture node and a texture coordinate node, just like that. Plug that into the scene color. We'll change the scene color to post-process input zero. Don't forget to do that. And we also need a component mask. Otherwise, like we'll be handling the the alpha value, the the opacity of the fog, with the actual color. So we just need to mask out the alpha so that the image is not treating our post process node as a a vector four. We need it to be treated as a vector three. And from there, we'll just make ourselves a color. Call this one. If we convert it to a parameter, we'll just call this fog one. We'll give ourselves a nice, let's say, like a warm orangey, orangey color. Like that, closer to yellow, it doesn't matter. And a lerp, and we'll put our color into B, our alpha into the alpha, and our scene texture node into the A value. Then to, to make it you know pop in scene, to make this work so that we can have a look at it, uh, grab yourself a scene depth node, just like that. And we need to divide it, hold in D and click. And then we'll send it through a clamp so we don't get any sort of erroneous strange values, just a zero to one clamp. And we'll also need to invert these values, otherwise it'll appear very strange, the opposite to what we want. Get yourself a scalar parameter, call this one fog one distance. Let's just default this to 10. And we'll uh, multiply it by 100. Otherwise we'll get tiny little float values. And we're dealing with like a whole scene, so we kind of want to be handling the distance in a bit more of an intuitive way. After you've done, after you got this far, uh, grab yourself another lerp, put the put our scene depth uh, network into the alpha, put our previous lerp into the B value, and grab these three nodes off the top: the texture coordinates, your post process input, and the component mask, and use that as your A value. Plug this into the emissive color, hit save, and we should be able to see it in the scene. So head back to the editor and open up your instance. We'll check these boxes here. Crank up your fog distance value and you can see the fog creeping up on the scene. Let's make myself some space here so we can all see it. And see it's based on distance. So the closer we get to things, the, the foggier things are going to appear. If we bypass this one minus node and just go straight into the alpha, hit save, it'll be the opposite. It'll be, yeah, the, the fog will, will creep up Still based on distance, but in the other way around. Instead of going from the player, it's going to go towards infinity. So this is a this is as simple as it gets. You can just stop here and just get get your, your basic fog map. But we've got a lot more to do. We want to do multicolored fog. We want to get some some dynamic functionality. So uh, come back to your material, and we'll keep on going. So this is our first fog value. This is fog one, and we're going to need to take all of this and duplicate. And this would be fog2, so we're going to rename our scalars. Fog2. And fog2 distance, fog distance. Just like that. And then hook them up into a, another lerp. And remembering the order that we do things in, we'll need to... So we sort of step back. So the fog1 is going to be this, this final lerp that goes into the node. Fog2 will be the next one behind it. Fog3 behind that. So just... Uh, what am I doing here? Well, we'll need another lerp, that's for sure. Two more lerps. We'll get fog2, uh, we'll just plug that straight into a, a lerp here. Let's get set up with our three colors. 
Let's rename these guys. Fog 3 and Fog 3 Distance. Oh, missed that one. Come on. There we go. And we'll also have to change these values. So set Fog 3 to like a thousand. That's the distance value. And our Fog 2 Distance to, I don't know, 50. We can tweak these in the, in the instance. It's totally fine. And to control the, the sort of the, the blend point of these uh, of these of the fogs, we'll uh, copy copy this, copy a, a scalar, the 100 and a multiply. Just duplicate that and we'll call this scalar our shift distance or median value or something like that, shift value, that'll work. And then plug that multiply into where that 100 goes on your fog because we don't need that constant anymore. Just like that, all done. And we'll also, we'll get, we'll just disconnect this uh, little bit here because we will lerp all of our fog together. With our scene depth as the alpha, with the fog as the A, and in the case of the topmost lerp, it'll be our post-process input node. And that sets us up for the, the actual fog once we have connected that lerp. Uh, next thing is our global fog. So we want to be able to control uh, the, the depth all the way out to infinity. And in fact, I'm also going to change these colors so we can see it in the preview. Let's go pink because I'm weird. And like a blue. Bluey purple. Let's see. So that should have us all set up for the most part. So yeah, next is the global fog. Our uh, global value. Uh, let's start by copy, copy one of your fog networks. And we'll also need another lerp for the final node. So just connect that up again so that we're ready. This one's going to be our global fog. Our global fog. And next up, the scene depth. So we'll copy all of that from one of the other nodes. This one's going to be our global distance. Just like that. Set the global distance 30. It'll need to be higher ultimately. And we don't need this one minus node because this is going to be applying uh, from infinity back to the player. From there, all we have to do is, well, I think we're about done. So add the, the color to the B value and add the clamp to the alpha. And that should handle that. So to recap, we're lerping between three different colors and a global color, which I will change now to like a cyan color. Yeah, looks a little strange at the moment, but that'll, that'll be fixed in the instance. So we're just calling on the post-process input zero. That's the, the frame that the post-process is being applied to and using scene depth to, uh, to, determine, to determine colors and shade and that kind of thing. And with that all set up, we should be ready to start playing around with it in the instance. But first off, in order to avoid like some weird sort of flickering, some jittering in the, in the image, come down here to blendable location in the post-process material category and change it to before translucency. That should sort of change the look of our scene a little bit, make it more true to the color and iron out any sort of weird rendering issues that we might have. And we can, we could manipulate the opacity values with scalars, but we can do that in the instance just by manipulating the, the actual raw color. So here we are, seems looking very, very blue. We'll uh, open up our instance, check all of these boxes. First off, let's take our global fog and we'll drop the opacity down quite low, like a 0.1-ish. And then let's play around with some other things. So we'll reset our distances. Oh, that shouldn't be that high. Reset that back to 30. All right, come back to the material. I've missed something. Uh, the shift value. So we need to get our shift value out of this multiplier, come down here and plug it into the B value of this multiplier node. Can't believe I forgot that. Oh well, you live and learn. So hit save again and we'll come back to the editor. Yeah, now things are looking a bit better. So here's our instance and we've got all these uh, different values to play with. Let's see what we can do here. So the shift value, as you can see, controls the medium point between all of our different fog colors. We can crank that up or down to determine where and how the colors shift. And we can even 
uh, manipulate our distance values to control how deep and how much each fog, like each fog category is going to be affecting. Some of these values are going to be quite subtle, some of the, the blending effects. Uh, but that's, that's kind of the point, because we want to be able to beautify our scenes. Uh, let's crank up our global fog a bit so we can see it a bit better. And you can manipulate the opacity, like the, the transparency of the fog, in, in the actual color, in the alpha value of the color. So we can just drop these down, change the saturation a bit. Yeah, fog 3 is going to be a little tougher to see. And our global fog, just like that. Even remove a little bit more saturation. And there we have it. So as you can see, we're blending between three different fog values based on the distance from the player and overlaying like a, a, a grand sort of tone with the global, uh, the global fog. We can make some really, really nice sort of silent hill effects too. We set them all to like white, just like this. I'll leave the global one as like a subtle blue and up the opacity of the global. And it will drop down some of these other alpha values. Bit like that. Yeah, we can sort of recreate the fog like you'd see in Silent Hill, which is pretty cool. Kind of spooky. And what else have we got? So we'll just reset these colors. With the transparency cranked right up, uh, we we get like this <laughs> this really interesting sort of silhouette blocky effect. Anyway, you can most clearly see the the change in the blend um, with the opacity turned right up. And yeah, from here out, it's just a matter of, of picking your colors. Like you can yeah, create some very stylized effects. Like I think uh, Firewatch was a, was a game that did, uh, did similar things with fog, like colored fog. And it's just fun to play with, honestly. So anyway, that's, uh, that's the end of the tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching and all, and thanks for sticking with me so long. I just recently hit 500 subscribers on uh, on YouTube, which is which is pretty amazing. Which I'm I'm absolutely stoked by. Thanks to everyone that's been watching and subscribing and that kind of thing. Make sure to share the videos because the growth keeps me motivated, keeps me thinking up more stuff to show up to you guys. And yeah, all I gotta say is just just thanks to everyone for supporting me. I've been thinking of doing something to to mark the occasion somehow, like maybe some sort of long form podcast to grab some people and talk about game design and and discuss the. You know, discuss the industry a bit further uh maybe even you know take a whole bunch of requests all at once and yeah make something make something really cool maybe some live streaming on on youtube i'm not sure if you have any ideas for something that you'd like to see or something you'd like to see me do uh please don't hesitate to drop me a comment or uh send me a message somewhere join the uh, train discord if you want to speak to me directly i'll leave links in the description uh but until then I, yeah i just want to say thanks once more <laughs> i know i've said it like four times but it, it really does mean the world to me so I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'll see you then.